The second round of the Wells Fargo Championship is in the books with a very impressive Jason Duffner today, shooting a 63 at Quail Hollow. Pretty awesome. Fun course to watch a golf on for sure. And also want to jump into this idea of routines, pre-shot routines. Are they good for you? Are they bad for you? How are they good for you? How are they bad for you? We're going to jump into all of it today on this episode. Let's tee it up. Welcome to Data Access Golf, your home for rapid golf improvement. And now, from the thin air of the Rocky Mountains, next on the number one tee, your host, Aaron Stewart. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Data Access Golf, the podcast. Uh, grateful to have you here. Pretty good golf today. Fun to watch. Um, really expected more out of Rory McIlroy, the, uh, the, seven, the 70, uh, just the one under. He made it look so easy yesterday, but tough course. Um, obviously, very tough course. Looks like there's still a few people out there, but you've got Jason Duffner in the clubhouse at minus 11. He was done pretty early today. I actually did a, an Instagram post with his score earlier, and at that time he was tied for the lead, and I kind of just felt like you know there would be some folks that came up and passed him, but his lead is held up, and um, so pretty impressive and, and, and kind of fun to see Jason Duffner back. Um, you never know with that, uh, what hat he's going to wear every day, right? So it's super interesting, really fun to, to see how he's going there. But um, Patrick Reed in the mix, Rory McIlroy in the mix, um, Pat Perez at, back after some injuries in the mix. So uh, cool, kind of fun to see. Good tournament. It's going to be a great weekend. Um, I wanted to discuss a little bit. I am, I'm, 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 I'm super pumped. Uh, I am actually leaving tomorrow and flying to San Francisco and I will be down in Carmel with the Extraordinary Golf uh, Mastery Group. We're kicking it off again this summer. I missed it last summer due to injury. Um, so I'm so pumped to see all my friends again, to see Fred and Joe and everybody at Extraordinary Golf. We are going to have a great time and a great summer learning. And I'm excited for this podcast because previously when I, I went through these mastery programs, I, there was just so much learning and so much good going on just for me personally, and I would put it into emails, I put it in my journal, um, but I'm just gonna share it all with you going through the summer, and it's gonna be, I'm just gonna kinda lay it out as to what I'm learning and why I'm doing it and, and where it's coming from, and so one of those things I wanted to talk about is this idea of routines, and, and many of you who have listened to this podcast for a while understand that I am a, a big uh, geek when it comes to technology, when it comes to um, my, my doctorate is in organizations and management, and I've really sort of parlayed that into um, using technology to make uh, companies and organizations more efficient. That's what I love to do, and that kind of transferred over and filtered into my golf game and, and making sure to utilize technology to make my golf game more efficient. And so I kind of became this sort of weird technology guru person in golf as well as in business. It's just kind of where my brain likes to hang out and what I like to geek out about. And I know that that makes me a super boring person one-on-one, -on -one, but uh, I just love to think about automations. And uh, for example, with, with this podcast, um, when I get done with this podcast, I'll produce it real fast and I've got some automations that run to help me produce it. I just do it all by myself. And then I will upload it to the service. It's uh, Anchor is the service that hosts the podcast. Once it hits Anchor, it creates an RSS feed. Well, through that RSS feed, I have a whole bunch of automations going on. So it creates a YouTube video. It creates, um, it goes to a bunch of different platforms. It creates a blog post on our blog uh, that kind of holds it there with the video. Um, it actually gets uploaded to SoundCloud. So I do all these different automations to make my life easier. And that's the cool thing about automations is it makes your life easier. And, and that's the cool thing about computers is when we get, um, when we go into like an organization and we take a look at what they're doing, we will see really mundane, ordinary, stupid tasks, and we'll try to create some technology that takes that task away from humans and we automate it. That's just kind of what we do, where my career's been, what I like to think about. If I can use technology to make somebody's life easier, then I'm going to geek out about it and, and figure out a way to get that done. And so um, my partners and I, we've come up with a lot of really cool stuff that way for Fortune 100 companies. I've obviously used it in my golf, in my golf life, and others of, of my partners have used it in other things that they do. 
And, and this, this idea then of automation, this idea of creating routines is, is really important as human beings, right? So I love routines. I, will, I, eat, I have the same breakfast every morning. I, I have a very limited wardrobe, so I don't have to choose. I, I don't have a lot to choose from in my closet. I love it that way. I can dress in the dark because pretty much everything matches because it's so boring. Uh, and I eat the same lunch every single day unless I go out to meet a friend or whatever. But if, I, if, if I'm here in the office, I have the same lunch every single day, and I don't leave to have lunch. I just stay here. So I love routines. They make life so much easier. And I believe, not, I know that we as humans can create routines that can become essentially automatic. And the way you do that is you create a series of steps and if you follow those steps in exactly the same order, say four to five days in a row, it becomes essentially an automation. And you can then have a very, very simple life. And you don't have to worry about certain things. So I have a 29-step process in, in the morning. And if I run through that process, and it, all of that has to be done before I sit down at my computer and start work. Right? So it's a 29-step process. And it's a bunch of different things. I, I read certain things. I set up my to-do list. I do a bunch of stuff, right? But I have done that so many times now that it is just automatic for me. I know what comes next, and so I don't forget. I don't forget to check the trash. I don't forget to change the laundry. I don't forget to um, stop at the grocery store. I don't forget to do anything because it's, it goes into a series of steps and automations. Well, we do that as golfers, right? We do that. We we call it a pre-shot routine. And these pre-shot routines can be super valuable because when we are learning, for example, if we go and learn a new technique to try to hit a, you know, to hit a fade, right? And so we go through a series of steps to hit a fade. And we know we have to be in a, we have to have our stance open a little bit. We have to play the ball at a certain place. I like to play mine a little forward of center. Um, we need to swing the club a little bit different, differently, make sure that we're coming from the outside of the target line and to hit a nice little, right? So there's a series of steps that we need to do to hit a fade. And when we're first learning to hit a fade, if we don't really understand that, it's really good to create a routine where we can then hit a really good fade. Or it's really good if we've changed our driver swing and, and we've started to pick out a target and, and we haven't done it in the past. It's really good to have a routine that we follow systematically until it becomes automatic. And as soon as it becomes automatic, it's super easy. But that's also the problem, okay? It's a beautiful system, but it's also a problem. And I've noticed this in my own game. As soon as we, you, in golf, it's so important to stay present to what's actually going on outside of us. And here's the problem with routines. Sometimes routines become so automatic and, and why we use routines and why I use routines in my own life is because I don't want to think about it. I don't want to be present. I just want all this stuff to get done so my life is simpler. That doesn't work in the golf swing. That's a problem in the golf swing. When you go through a series of routines to the point where it becomes automatic and you're not thinking about the, the why of why you're doing all those things, um, you now have all the time in the world for your conscious mind to completely sabotage your game and start thinking about the trouble and start thinking about everything that you don't want to be thinking about before you hit a golf ball. So in this particular case, and I know this is kind of in the weeds, but it's very important when you go through a pre-shot routine, right, and you're making sure everything's set up, and I don't have necessarily a problem with pre-shot routines as long as they don't come, as long as they don't become so routine that we are now not worried about, we are not thinking about anything and, and we are totally up in our heads. And we now have, it's automated to the point where our minds are free to wander and do whatever else. Now we've got a problem. And because we're probably thinking about things, uh, the trouble, the things that we're not supposed to be thinking about. Okay? So there's, there's a couple ways to combat this. The way I combat it is I don't have a pre-shot routine. I, I don't. I mean, I, I will pick out a target. 
I will, and I don't do it exactly the same way every single time. I will pick out sometimes a blade of grass in front of the ball, a foot in front of the ball, sometimes something else. But I try to keep it as different as possible, as interesting as possible, so that I am never all caught up in my head. I'm always thinking about something outside myself the target. And I don't always have the target as the focus while I'm swinging. I might be focused on my left shoulder. I might be focused on my back heel and, and feeling weight come into that heel and be so interested in something outside of myself that that's, and that when I don't have a pre-shot routine, that becomes easier for me. When I have a pre-shot routine and I go through the routine, I can literally get set up and my mind could be thinking about work. It could be thinking about water on the left. It could be thinking about OB on the right. It could be thinking about a whole bunch of different things. But the problem is I'm up in my head. I'm thinking about stuff that doesn't help me. I'm now um, empowering the conscious mind to completely sabotage my golf game. And I don't want that. I want my conscious mind someplace else distracted so my subconscious self can play really amazing golf. So I can express myself uh, from a very, very internal place and play my best golf, a natural place um, where I, I can express myself in the best way possible. And a lot of this terminology is extraordinary golf stuff. And I, I, it's hard for me to kind of figure out where I stop and where, you know, where extraordinary golf stops and where I start or it's so blended. But I mean, a lot of this terminology, if you've read extraordinary golf or if you've read extraordinary putting, this is going to sound very familiar to you. Um, the routine stuff is something that's come to me lately that I've really, I, I love to create routines, but I've also seen that this is becoming a problem in my golf game. And it may be become a problem in your golf game. So if you have a certain routine before you hit a putt, if you have a certain routine before you chip, um, make sure that if you're going through those routines, the last thing you do before you pull the club back is get outside yourself. Think about something outside yourself. Do not allow that routine to allow your conscious mind to take over, if that makes sense. And I hope it does. If it doesn't, let me know. We can talk about it some more. But it's really just about making sure that we are focused on something outside of ourselves, something that's in the real world, the 3D world, where the 3D people live, not in between our ears. In between our ears is the worst possible place to be when we're playing golf. And sometimes I think routines can get us there um, far too readily. Um, so just keep an eye on that. Make sure that your routine is um, one of two things. Either don't have a pre-shot routine and be super interested in the stuff that you pick out to make your golf shot work. From the target back to everything, to where your weight is, everything. Make sure that it's interesting and you're staying outside yourself. Or two, if you do have a pre-shot routine that's really helping you learn something new or you just really like your pre-shot routine, that's great, but make sure that the last thing you do when that pre-shot routine is over is something that gets you outside of yourself and focused more on what's going on outside. So consciously put your, your focus on your elbow or your knee or your target or the breeze on the back of your neck or, or, or the traffic noise like my son did out on I-15, whatever it is, make sure that you go from that pre-shot routine to something that's outside yourself and don't get caught in between your ears and play really horrible golf because of it. Hopefully that helps. Hope you have a great weekend. I'm off tomorrow. I don't know when the next podcast will be. Hopefully, maybe from, uh, maybe from a little uh, motel room, I'll get some things out to you. We'll see how it goes. But uh, I will be back. Um, you've got like three days out in Carmel with uh, Fred, Joe, Gary, and the gang. Uh, I, I don't know who else will be there. I'm totally pumped. I know Elliot, Kathy, all my good friends will be there. Um, Hide, uh, I can't wait to see everybody. And we are going to have a great time, and I will report back to you. And this is going to be a great summer of a lot of really wonderful learning. So um, enjoy the tournament. If you're getting out this weekend, enjoy the golf. And remember, better data always means better golf. And don't, don't let routines um, screw you up. Thanks. Thanks for listening to Data Access Golf with Aaron Stewart. Check us out online at dataaccessgolf.com. And we'll see you on the next episode.